Today I'm going to fix my old game art. It used to look like this, and some of you even seem to like it. But the biggest issue with this art is that it took too long time to make. So today I'm going to illustrate my current workflow, and how I get decent results relatively quickly. I'm going to start with this tile map, and I'm going to create all the necessary game art and assets, and then stage this scene completely, so that you get a sense for how I make my game art from scratch. This old scene has close to 60 different assets, and they're all quite large and left in a rather unfinished state. It also took me probably more than 100 hours to make. This new scene, however, took me around 15 to 20 hours hours to make, of which about 10 hours of that time was spent drawing, and the other 5 to 10 hours were spent on staging the scene. I created everything using Procreate on my iPad, but most of the features that I use will work in other drawing programs like Aceprite, Krita, and Photoshop too. And we're going to start by outlining the goals for this scene. The colors are going to be yellow and brown and gray. The assets I'm going to make are a tree, some foliage, and bushes. And then something that kind of reminds you of Roman architecture, with quite a bit of rocks. And I have the tile map and the assets from our old scene. So now I just need to remake all of it. I think it could be good to keep the ideas for some things from the old scene, just to sort of show what is decent about it and what is bad. Let's start with this asset. It's this sort of hanging grass. And the idea for it isn't actually that bad, but the details of it are way too small. So I'm going to draw on top of it. I'll still do these hanging bits, but just make the line art thicker. That way, it will be really easy to see the shape when in game. Then I just cover the entire asset in a flat yellow color. At the top, I'm just going to draw a quick, rough, slightly brighter yellow. I don't care about the details at this point. I'm only doing this so that I can shake in the scene if the shading works. Then I take this asset and I just place it at the start of the scene. And we can see that there are some small downsides with this technique, especially for grass. We get this edge here that makes it kind of clear that we're overlapping the asset. But I leave that for now because I can generally cover it up later on if I feel the need to. For the next step, I take this asset, which looks kind of like a grass arc or something like that. And I just draw it similar to the previous hanging grass asset. What I'm working on next is the marble rock assets. If we look in our previous scene, we can see that the rock we have here is not an easy shape to repeat. So I kind of want to make it more like blocks, kind of like how a marble quarry looks like. With that said, something that often happens when you make normal tile blocks is that you get this type of wallpaper effect. It looks quite artificial, and that is mostly because the tiling is too uniform. So in order to avoid this, I'm just going to make it not uniform. Smart. And in order to make it not uniform, I'm going to make several blocks of different shapes and sizes. That way, I don't get that perfectly repeated look. I'm going to start with this big square block. I'm adding this bush on top and this crack going along the bottom. But this is in some sense a bad idea, because it will make the block less repeatable. However, the reason I do it is that I want to check if a crack works and a bush works. But you will see me later go back and change it, and then split those assets. So next I'm looking for some asset that can replace this tree stump here. The problem with making a stump asset is that it's not particularly repeatable. Because every time you repeat it, the player will go, Hmm, that stump looks surprisingly familiar. So it's just better to make this a thin stone block. But as you see with this asset, when we add a bush and a crack in the rock, this asset also becomes less repeatable. So I'll remove those elements later on. Part of this idea of making an asset repeatable is about avoiding too many details. The more details I add to it, the more unique it becomes and the easier it will be to recognize if we see it repeated. We can also see that this thin block here is actually way too big. This is happening because I'm just drawing on top of this asset, and this original asset isn't the right size. The way to actually draw this asset and match it perfectly is just look at our tile map, and as we can see that this asset should be two tiles thick, and we know the size of each tile, we can calculate how big the asset needs to be to match. And then to be on the safe side, we can draw the asset twice as big. That way we have a high resolution original, and a version that gives us optimal performance. But even though this asset doesn't match, I can re-import it at a smaller size to make it match decently. The risk of winging it like I did here is that the line art might become too thin, because I won't be consistently scaling down my assets by half. Because if you think about it, if I have a small asset and I draw the line art like this, and then I scale it up so that it occupies a lot of my scene, then the line art will also occupy a lot. So if you want to keep a consistently sized line art, then you need to consistently scale down your assets. And I think that scaling down your assets by half tends to be a decent trade-off. And in this case, it actually looks fine, even though I didn't scale it down perfectly. Now I'll go back to the start of the tile map. And I need to add something below this hanging grass. And as I said, I'm going for stone blocks. Now I'm going to start by drawing all of these blocks in the same document to ensure that the blocks are consistent with each other. I also add some bushes on top, just so that I can add these on the assets later on in the scene. But I will already at this stage split it so that it's actually not a part of the asset. And then I will split all the blocks in their own separate files as well. Then I go into the scene again and randomly drop them in. The only thing I'm thinking of here is trying to ensure that it doesn't look too perfect. So I place them sort of randomly. So now I'm looking at this area of the scene. We can see here the benefit of having these pillars. We get some extra parallax 
and it sort of breaks up the scene quite well. We also get the added benefit that we don't need to place any assets in front of it, because the pillars themselves demand quite a bit of attention. So I think we should continue having pillars, but these pillars are just sort of random rocks and they don't really look constructed. But they also don't look natural. I don't know what I was going for. <laughs> this is where I think we should actually go for something more constructed. And as I stated earlier, I'm going to create something influenced by Roman architecture. So what I will do is just pick one of these pillars and draw on top of it. Since I know that the pillars will be symmetrical, I can make use of a nice feature of most drawing software, which is to mirror everything you draw. So I'm going to draw on one side, but everything I do will be copied on the other side. I'm also using a feature that makes it possible for me to draw perfectly straight lines. This also exists in basically all drawing applications, and it's really good to use for these types of assets. But then I draw the indentations in the pillar. I do this by mostly drawing straight lines, but I also bend it slightly at the bottom and the top. Then I draw the base and the top. I'm not going to perfectly match the room architecture. Instead, I'm just doing a simple column with a small indentation at the base. Then I color the pillar in and move on to drawing the arc. Here I'm just doing a symmetrical arc, and then we can see here that I'm adding this ornament. Drawing this ornament might seem quite odd, but the reason I do this is because I'm going to have to repeat the arc several times, and I need to hide the seam when I repeat them. So I place this ornament on top so that I can ensure that I will cover the seam. This is mostly something I have to do because I don't do a tile approach, so I don't always get that perfect seam. Then I just add some small details to the arc, like some cobblestones on top and a small triangular indentation, and then I just color it in. Pillar, then arc, and then we use the ornament to cover where the arc ends. Now I'm just drawing each side of the bridge. Once again, I make the assets be mirrored so that we get perfect symmetry. I'm just going to do something that somewhat fits the rest of the aesthetic. So I'll throw in a small platform at the bottom and then an indented arc. At the top I'm going to add a thicker block and then I'm just going to add a torch or something for good measure. I'm not entirely sure if I will keep this but I find that it can always be nice to just test things already at this stage to see if I like it. I color everything in and make a quick little fire thing to our torch. This obviously looks bad, but I want to keep it like this for now, so I don't waste time on it without knowing if I'm actually going to keep it. For the other side, I'll also do a big block on the top, and then an arc, but the arc here will be slightly bigger. The way I'm doing this has downsides. I could have just used this one block and then repeated it on both sides, but I didn't really want to make this look too much like a bridge. Instead, I wanted to look more like up here, and so I wanted to signal that this side is attached to the main ground, and this other side is a bigger platform meant for jumping off. It's just a slight change that hopefully sends a different message to the player. Now I kind of have the pillars and the platforms, and I just need to add the blocks that it connects to. And I think I can actually make it attach directly to the stone blocks. It will look sort of odd for starters, because this side here is really constructed, and this side here is sort of more rough. And as stated earlier, it kind of looks like a quarry. But I think I can actually make that work, by making this place look somewhat abandoned, and sort of left in an unfinished state. And the best way to do that is just to add some grass on top of it, making it look somewhat overgrown. I'm going to to go back and check later if this works, but for now I think it looks okay. And I just continue across this entire part of the tile map, and just add rocks randomly. This might look somewhat dull and flat, but I personally think that it tends to be easier to make the platforming area quite boring, but simple to do. And then add the spice and nice things in the foreground and background. At least in a place like this, it becomes incredibly tricky to cover this entire area in something original. I already have the arc at the end that is sort of unique, and I don't want to overdo it at this stage. If I feel like this is too empty later on, then I can always go back and change it. But I don't want to spend time overworking this area if I don't actually need to. And here is me making a bit of a mistake. I draw another big block and some orange foliage on the top. It's not the end of the world, it doesn't look bad, but it also isn't necessary. I could have just repeated the previous asset and saved some memory. Now we're at this part of the scene, where we had a big stone block and this weird tree stump. I really dislike this solution, because it looks odd to have this sort of pine tree growing side by side with a stone block. So I think instead, I'm just going to make it another stone block. I can hopefully sell the idea that these stone blocks aren't cut out uniformly, and that this part was just sort of left hanging. I placed a big block with orange foliage here in the scene. We can see when we add the other blocks that it doesn't line up perfectly, and it looks sort of odd. So I add some foliage here at the bottom tile to make it seem like there is this other stone block that also sticks out from the platform. Now we're at this stage here, where we previously had this big tree. As I said previously, I do still want some trees in this scene, and I will go quite well with this overgrown thing that I got going on. If we look at this previous tree, it actually looks quite nice. It's just that the style of it is a bit off. We have too many details going on and the foliage has too small line art, but the rest of it actually looks quite nice. 
And since it already matches the tile map perfectly, I think it's actually better to just keep it. So what I'm going to do is shift the color of the tree slightly, just to see if I can get it looking decently. But we can see when we zoom in that this foliage is way too intricate compared to the other foliage I've done. So I go over it and cover it. So a small thing to note here is that I'm doing a separate bush for each platform. Once again, you get better performance by making one or two foliage platforms and then repeating them. But I don't really care much about performance here. I just want it to match perfectly in a quick manner. If I need to fix the performance later on, then I know that this is one of the areas to fix. The thing we see if we look at the base of the tree is that it's also too detailed. And it doesn't look bad, but the details don't match the rest of the aesthetic, and they also demand more attention from the player. So simplifying the rendering of this tree would probably be beneficial. The line art is still good, but if we just change the color to brown, and then cover the entire tree in a uniform color. Now we have this. This looks really flat, but I can draw a thick, brighter line with our brush, and now it looks even worse. But if I just punch it all up, then I get something that kind of works. And this required almost no effort. The color is still bad though. It's a bit too depressing of a brown. So just go into the adjustments and play around with it until I get something better. Then I do this for the entire tree. I add a flat brown base color, and cover the entire tree, and I drag some lines in a brighter color. And I pick the areas where I have quite a bit of empty space to make it look like those areas get a bit more light on them. I smudged it all up, and now I have a tree that is somewhat simplified and fitting our scene. This only took me about 10 minutes to do, but it looks quite decent. For now I'm drawing this as a big asset, but I'm going to cut up several parts of this asset later. This is important to do for two reasons. One reason is that it would be good to make this tree modular, so that we can stitch together a unique tree from several different pieces. The other benefit of stitching together a smaller asset is that this original asset is too big to load into memory efficiently. So we want to cut it so that we don't need to load it all into memory at once, but instead stagger it. But for now I'm just going to place this entire tree at once, to see if it works and looks okay. And then I can cut it up later. This is just my workflow. Since all these small parts will need to fit together later, I prefer to create them together, and then when I see that all the parts look good, then I can cut them up into separate assets. I place the tree in the scene, and add some grass below it, but I can already see a problem when jumping up on it. This tree is placed on a layer in front of our character. I usually do this so that I can get the grass to cover the feet of the character, to make the scene have a bit more depth, but it doesn't make sense that the character is running behind the tree here. But since I already knew that I wanted to cut the tree right at this edge, I can go back and do that. This cut is really easy to make, since I know that the seam will be covered by all the foliage. Now I add some blocks beneath the grass here, but I still don't have anything for this small platform here. And being lazy, or smart, depending on who's asking, I'm just gonna add one of those Roman pillars, and it kinda works. Now if we look back at our starting area, I still haven't figured out what to do with these platforms, but once again, I go back to the simplest solution. I already have the tree done, so I will just reuse it as much as possible. This is really where I should technically make this tree modular. And I'll at least start with the idea for it here, to show you how you could do a somewhat modular tree. I take this main trunk of it, like this, without adding any branches, and I just save one of these branches here, and then I just check to see if I can make it somewhat covered platform. I'm going to make a small adjustment here to the tile map. I do this for two reasons. One is that this character runs too fast, so having a platform of two tiles is really too punishing. It's too easy to miss and kind of sucks. Plus the design of this scene overall looks better with slightly bigger platforms. Now I can just make these small branches into a separate file and make one repeatable foliage asset. And if I place it all in the scene, it looks quite decent. Not perfect, but it kind of works. In order to explain what I'm going to do here, we need to take a quick look at the original scene. Because I actually made it so that you were starting here, and the path was blocked by this big mushroom. But then the path you were taking circled back on itself, and by then you were jumping on the branches of the tree that you encountered at the start. And at this point you would jump over the mushroom or something, I don't know really. But if you think about it, you really want to signal to the player of potential paths. And this mushroom never really signaled anything. But then this new scene, we have an opportunity to do so. So I want to make the player think that they can find something on the other side. So how can I solve this? Well, I can actually place the tree because the player knows that the tree has these platforms. But if I just place the tree here, since it doesn't match the tile map, it kind of looks odd. So I was thinking I could make the tree grow around a stone wall. And I'm not actually entirely sure it works. Preferably I want to integrate it a bit better, kind of like Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Which is actually not Angkor Wat, but it's close enough. But I'm gonna keep it for now, and then add some foliage to make it look more overgrown. I'm mainly adding foliage on the top of each crack here. I do this because I imagine that this is the type of grass that doesn't really attach to vertical walls very well, but that can grow perfectly well in cracks and sort of horizontal flat surfaces. And I think it looks kind of decent like this. I also add more grass and some blocks below, and I actually have a first draft of the entire bottom part of our tile map, and I can actually finally start on working on the upper part of the tile map. If we start by looking at the original scene, 
we can see that the grass here is roughly the same as the start of the scene. So reusing that hanging grass asset is probably a good start. Then we can see that I had this 45 degree slope, something that I really don't like having. So I'm going to quickly change these to look more like stairs. And I can immediately see that the best solution for this section is probably stone blocks. Then I add some grass on top of it. And as previously stated, if I want to add something cool, it's better for me to do that later. So I'm just going to make this entire section be made of stone blocks. I do the same for this path going up, and all the way to what would have corresponded to this area. So at the moment, I'm just reusing the same 4 or 5 assets to do all the heavy lifting. When I used to approach my scenes, I added something new at every place the character went to. And that might seem like a cool solution, but it also sends the wrong signals. Most of the environments we encounter in real life, or even good games like Ori and Hollow Knight, do look somewhat the same. We might have one or two things that change, but a lot of it has the same type of elements. So if you start by changing the base elements every step you take, it starts to look more and more like an art gallery, and less and less like an environment. So I actually think it's better to just reuse, 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 and then later on figure out if we need more or not. It's actually a quicker way to work as well, so it's sort of a win-win. Okay, if we look at the original scene, we had this tree up here, and once again, this platform tree looks kind of similar to the previous tree I changed, so I can use this one as well. This one is not particularly modular or repeatable, but it will have to do. Now if we look at what came after this platform, I had the branches that you were jumping on. I've already mentioned how I didn't like how small the platforms were, because the movement speed of the character is too high, so you don't really have the precision to land properly. So we'll start by changing them to significantly bigger platforms. Now we need to figure out what type of asset I can make that will fit this scene well. I still don't have particularly many assets that make this scene feel built, so what I'm gonna do is try and make something like a hanging chandelier. Okay, so I'm making a chandelier, so I probably want to make it look symmetrical. So once again, I'm using the feature that mirrors the drawing area. I want this chandelier to look more like a cup, so that it makes sense that you can jump on it. And once I have the cup, I can see that it looks kind of dull. So I add some small ornaments to it. And this isn't actually that difficult to do when you mirror it. You just make a random shape. And the fact that it makes it symmetrical makes it seem like you know what you're doing. The top of the cup is also a bit too empty. So I add these Roman curls. These technically don't make too much sense in 3D because this asset would be spherical, but these curls look as if we're seeing them from straight ahead, which looks better, but is technically incorrect. So while it is technically incorrect, I tend to not worry too much about these type of impossibilities. Instead, I prefer to make it look nice. Most people tend to not notice these type of impossibilities anyway, so I feel like it can be unnecessary to get hung up on. Lastly, I colored assets in, and then I add the cup in game, and it kind of works. The thing that is missing now is that I have nothing to make the cup hang, so I need a chain. I add the symmetry feature, and then I draw a circle. And I cut this at the top, and then I add this small square at the top of the ring. Then I shade it quickly, and this is actually it. This is enough to make a chain of any length. I just layer each of these links on top of each other, and I get something that kind of looks like a chain. Now I just add grass in each cup to make the cups look somewhat abandoned. The only problem now is that these cups kind of feel like they're just hanging freely. And I probably want to make it so that the player feels like these cups are hanging from the ceiling. So now I kind of need to think about this area. You can't actually jump up here, so even though the previous scene had this open space at the top, I think given how I've created this scene, it would actually be better if I made a ceiling and then brought the ceiling down to occupy quite a bit of the scene. It makes the scene look less empty, and it also makes it clear how these cups are part of the environment. Finally, we're actually finished with the platforming area, and now we can start with the background. The assets are kind of light grey, so I want the sky to be very bright grey, almost white. And now I start placing things. The main downside of the platforming area is that it's just stone blocks. So I want to make it feel a bit more like there are some structures here. And I don't want to make any new assets, so I need to look at the assets that I already have that look constructed. And those assets were mostly just the pillar and the arc. But I think I can actually make use of those to make something in the background. So just place pillars and stone blocks and then some arcs, and we get something kind of looking like, I don't know, Parthenon. And then I can make the stone blocks to make it look like stairs. And once again, I want to add some foliage to make it feel less empty and fake. And here I also encountered the same issue I encountered earlier, where the scene looks extra empty due to the extra space here. So I add a ceiling and then I drag it down to make the area feel a bit more cramped. But it also helps me hide seams in the background and helps me break up the scene more. If we look back to this empty area up here, we could imagine that it's perhaps a room where you fight a boss or something. In my original scene, I had a tree in the background, but it was left quite unfinished. I don't think the idea of having a tree here is a bad idea, but I kind of want to make you believe that this tree has some special significance. And I have this tree here, which I made in an old video of mine, and I think it's actually a fairly decent example of a tree that looks special. And to sell that even more, I think it will actually keep the leaves green, because it kind of makes it seem like the tree is still alive, but the rest of the area is sort of 
dead and abandoned. Now at the top here, I see a small problem. The tree kind of passes through the platform, and it kind of looks jarring. But I think I actually already have a decent solution for this. If we look at this part here to begin with, it's a bit odd and empty looking. But if I instead make this into platforms, I can add those hanging cups or chandeliers. Once again, I did make some changes to the tile map, but I would argue that these aren't detrimental changes. It both looks nicer and feels nicer to play. Okay, so now I can add some things to the foreground, and I think I want to add some yellow bushes, since I had some bushes here before and it kind of worked. On top of that, I want to make one or two smaller decorative elements, and I actually already have this smaller podium that kind of looks like one of the pillars, and I can make a small pot with flowers to add to it. This pot is also relatively simple to make. I mirror the base of it, and then I put some random flowers in it. And I'll mix the bushes with some stone blocks, both to get that sort of organic natural feeling, as well as to signal to the player that this is not just a platforming area that has stone blocks, but all the surrounding area has stone blocks as well. I think that it helps sell the environment even more. I also add a few rocks, but I'm not certain I want to keep them. Actually, I'm not going to keep them. This is a dumb mistake. It adds more textures, and it kind of takes away from the idea that this is a quarry anyway. I do however think that it could be worth to add a large cup that stands on the ground, similar to the hanging cups. The process for this is the same. I mirror the canvas and then I make a cup like shape. And since I have these type of column things going on, I can make a column shape at the base of the cup. And then I add these illogical curls that make the asset look a bit nicer. When I'm placing foreground assets like this, I tend to just try and ensure that I maximize parallax. I do this by placing my assets not in a straight line, but more like a wave. And then on the next layer, I alternate it a bit. That way I kind of get something that looks sort of like sine curves that are offset by 90 degrees. I don't do it exactly like this all the time, but that is one of the techniques I use. We can see that I place the cup at the end of the scene here, and I make it quite large. I actually do this for quite a particular reason. If we look at this wall here, it looks extremely empty. And if I were to try to add bushes and things, then I would have to place a lot of bushes to make this area blend in. But if I place a cup here, now it doesn't look empty. All your attention is brought to the cup because this is the first time you see a cup. This is really why I wanted to make the cup, because these special types of decorations demand a lot of attention. So even if this place here is just blocks and grass, that isn't really what the player is thinking. They're more focused on this pot here and how the flowers are green. When we reach here, you aren't thinking about the empty stone blocks in the background, you're thinking about this cup. So when I make the base scene, I can keep it rather boring and repetitive and just add small sprinkles here and there and I hopefully get something that is coherent, but not repetitive. Because if we look back to the original scene, since I did something new every single step I took, I kind of made the scene lose coherence. Not at all times, but at enough places for it to look kind of odd overall. I still only have the tree here, and it looks kind of empty. With this area, I mainly have two goals. I want to sell the idea that this tree is important, and I also want to signal that someone found this tree important. And so what I'm going to do is place pillars around it. And generally with all of these solutions or ideas, I'm not entirely being original, but perhaps that is clear. I start from the end goal, and then I think, how do I solve this? How do I make this tree seem important? And then I think of things that I know people have found important. So in this case, for instance, I'm creating some sort of monument. So we can look at things like Taj Mahal. They have these four pillars that surround the palace, and it helps make the palace seem more grand. And so I'm just replicating that idea here. This tends to be how I approach it. It means that I don't end up with particularly original solutions, but they're hopefully going to resonate with the player, because I didn't just make something up. I stole from reality. I obviously still want some foliage on the pillars to show that this used to be a place of worship, but has now largely been abandoned. Now we're adding things to the bottom of our scene. I'm not going to add much here. I add where I think it feels empty. And if I have something that is already of interest, then I'm not going to add more things to it. Because if I did, it could easily make the scene look cluttered. So we can see that this place was kind of empty, so I added a few things in front of it. But I leave a space here, because we have this arc or bridge thing here. And then I also want to add some things to the other end of the bridge, because it looks a bit empty. At the tree here, I also kind of want to add some things. In this case, I already have a lot of things that add interest, but I want to hide the roots a bit to make it seem like it isn't just stuck to a stone block, but as if there's stuff in the front that it can connect to. Okay, so now we have the base for our entire scene. If we run through it, we can see that most of it kind of makes sense. Now I kind of know that most of the assets work, and my scene looks decent. And at this point, I haven't spent that much time drawing, maybe only two, three hours. So now I can go back and add textures to make the assets look better. The way I've approached it means that I've reduced the amount of time I've had to spend drawing, and I know all the assets are coherent because I made them all at the same time, and now I'm improving them at the same time. I'm going to keep the process of texturing somewhat similar for all the assets, to ensure that they still look as if they belong to the same scene. I start by adding textures to the rock. I alpha lock the base color, 
and then I select the noise brush and pick a slightly darker gray. I keep the brush size fairly large and then I add a few brush strokes. Now we can see that we get this greeny surface on the rock, kind of similar to how a rock looks. Then I pick a brighter gray and do the same thing for the top of the rock. Once I've done that, I can create a layer on top of the line art. And on the bottom of the rock, add a slightly darker gray and just drag a line at the bottom to indicate some sort of shadow. And at the top, I do a lighter gray to indicate the light bouncing at the edge of the rock. Then I just do this for all the rocks. For the leaves and foliage, the process is somewhat similar. I add a small texture covering the entire base color. This time I'm using a brush with a slightly more complex shape. I make the top of the acid slightly brighter and the bottom slightly darker. Then I add a layer on top of my line art and I pick a bright yellow color and draw on the edge of the previous line art. This just makes it seem kind of like a highlight. This does not technically make sense, but it looks quite decent and it's simple to do. This process is slightly more cumbersome for the marble pillars and cups because I have to take into account each individual shape. So I get some more shadows and highlights, but overall the thought process is somewhat similar. I add shadows at the bottom and highlights at the top. But as I imagine that this stone block covers the top of the pillar, I also add a shadow here instead of a highlight. This won't be perfect every time I use it. So when the pillar is standing freely, this light at the top here kind of makes sense. But when I add a huge stone block on top of it, we would expect a shadow here and not light. But I don't think too many people think of this. If it still looks kind of correct 90% of the time, especially when there are these type of small flaws or tiny flaws. So this is kind of my process for lighting. I make something that looks kind of correct and where the errors aren't too noticeable. Still want to keep the tree fairly simple because it actually gave me quite a clean look. So the main thing I'm doing here is to add some small streaks in the highlight and shadows, just so that it doesn't look that smooth. I want some texture to sell the idea that this is a rough surface. The reason I'm using streaks is that I want to show how the tree kind of follows the flow that I've tried to establish with the line art. Now I kind of want to go into something I'm trying for the first time, but that I think might be kind of nice. Instead of drawing cracks and nicks directly on the asset, I will draw them as separate assets. So the asset on its own will look sort of like a simple line, but that way I can go into Godot and add the cracks to any rock wherever it fits. And it actually looks like it belongs to the rock. Now I can make each rock look kind of unique without having to create a separate sprite for each individual rock. I also add some particle effects at the bottom of the scene and up at the big tree here. This partly looks nice, but I think it generally helps separate each parallax layer while also helping to make the assets feel more 3D, just to spice up the scene a bit. Okay, so if we go over the scene and then kind of compare it to the previous scene, the previous scene is a bit all over the place in terms of style. Some assets are detailed and some are left quite simple. But in this new scene, they all look coherent. And that is largely because I never overworked one asset. For every improvement I made, I made them on all assets at the same time to ensure that whatever upgrade I made was made uniformly. I also tried to reuse assets significantly more often. This to some extent made the scene simpler, but also more coherent. In my last video where I discussed how my old art was kind of terrible, I got quite a few comments saying that they actually kind of like my old art, for some reason. <laughs> but that is to some extent missing the point. The thing is I probably spent more than 100 hours creating this old scene, and it's still left unfinished. Whereas this new scene, in its entirety, didn't take me more than 20 hours. The assets took around 6 hours in total to draw, but that is not including the trees, which would probably have taken me around 4 hours to do, because they're more complex than the other elements. And then staging the scene took around 5 hours. It's manageable, and this is a very important distinction. You generally don't have more than 100 hours to spend on one single scene. So even though you might prefer one style over the other, you would have to take into account that I can reach a fairly polished version six times as fast. With that said, there are some things in the scene that aren't perfect. There are quite a few assets that I could have skipped and reused instead, mainly foliage assets and bushes. I could probably have skipped two or three rock assets as well, but I tend to not want to start with performance in mind. I start by just looking at what works, and when I have something that works, then I go back and fix the scene until I get decent performance, because I don't want the scene to be more optimized than necessary anyway. The biggest improvement to this scene would be to make the tree more modular and consist of smaller assets. This would improve some performance and also make the tree asset more reusable. I do think it was actually quite nice using few parallax layers. I was shown this comparison picture of Silk Song three years ago versus six months ago, and it showed the exact same scene. But if you look at it, they actually cut most of the scenery, and it kind of looks better. And since it has fewer assets, if you made it from scratch, it would probably demand less work. So I wanted to try it out and see what I could come up with. So thanks, Rigger, for showing me this. At some places like the tree here, ignoring the background completely kind of works. So I might try it more in the future. It definitely meant that I had some reduced workload. Sorry for the length of this video, I just wanted to try outlining my entire process from start to finish. I've been sitting here talking for two hours straight now and kinda want some coffee. Thanks for watching. Bye.